Bring out the brooms. Bring out the brooms. I'm disgusted with the New Orleans Pelicans and what took place in that series against the Warriors, particularly in Game Three. The best shooter in the in the game today, possibly, you know what? Ain't no possibly. The best shooter ever. Yeah, I said it. Steph Curry is the best shooter ever. They down three. They need three points to put it in overtime. And you don't follow it? I don't understand what the hell was Monty Williams thinking about letting him get that three off. That should have been the first thing y'all talked about in the timeout. Foul. You know he's capable of making it. And if he ain't capable, Clay Thompson capable. They're not the Splash Brothers for nothing. This is the kind of things that I've been critiquing Monty Williams about all season long. You know, I've been trying to help you and save you and take up for you all season to people, to all these folks that want your, want your job taken from you. But after that performance the other night, 20 points in the fort at home, I can't take up for you no more, Monty. And if I was Tom Benson, I would have met you in the tunnel with your walking papers. In overtime, you had another chance. You're down on one with less than 40 seconds left. You draw up a play for Eric Gordon to shoot a three-pointer. Did I miss something? You was down one. And you drew up a play for Eric Gordon to shoot a three-pointer. What the hell were you thinking right there? Ryan Anderson and Andy Davis was carrying you the whole game. But you drew that up. I don't understand. You still had a chance down the line in the overtime when you was down two. With let like 18 seconds left to go, I think. And you gave the ball to Andy Davis, which I didn't have a problem with that. But you call an isolation plea against Andrew Bogut, who was a candidate for defensive player of the year and probably the best post defender in the NBA. And you call an isolation. I think you should have been more creative right there, Monty. You should have put Andy Davis and Ryan Anderson in a pick and roll or Tyreek and Andy Davis in a pick and roll and made it more difficult on their defense. All Andrew Bogut had to do was put his hands up. And... Andy Davis, I like the way you played this whole series, bro. But you're going to learn that in the playoffs, they're not going to give you them little ticket tack fouls at the end of the game. They're going to let you play through it. Right there on the last play in overtime, I think you were trying to draw a foul where, um, rather than make that shot. You're 22 years old. You're going to learn from it. It's cool. But, you know, I think the Pelicans, they just they couldn't bounce back from that because game four, you saw what happened. They, were, they still were stuck on game three, you know? And you know what pissed me off more so with Monty Williams? And I and I, I hate to keep on getting on him, but I have to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In the press conferences and some of the interviews I saw, he was trying to downplay the whole situation in game three, the whole how everything went down, the three-point about stuff, the play calls he called. He tried to downplay it. Man, man up, man up. Own it. You didn't own it, Amani. I got a problem with that. You didn't own it. And I know you're going to keep your job because Tom Benson just happy y'all made the playoffs. Y'all were just happy to be there. You know? So you're going to keep your job. And really, it don't make no sense to fire him because, I mean, who are you going to bring in? The only guy out there that I would take, I would bring in and let Monty Williams go is Mark Jackson. And you know how people feel about Mark Jackson with his religious views and things like that. So, But we're not going to get into all that. That's a whole other story. Nah, I heard they about to offer Andy Davis a max deal. Your dog gonna write you better because if you lose him, guess what? You won't have a, a, a soul in the stands in the next four years. You already lost Chris Paul, so you better make sure you get this deal done with Andy Davis. And I think y'all need to trade away Drew Holiday and Eric Gordon and bring in a legitimate small four, a legitimate shooting guard to go along with Tyreek and Andy Davis, which is all your future. Andy Davis 22, Tyreek like 25. Keep everybody else on the team. I like a sheep. I like uh Point Dexter. I like uh, uh Norris Cole. I was a good addition on the bench to bring in the game. I like them. And then get some couple people out the draft. And I think that Pelican got a real bright future, bro. Saturday night is going down. Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao. Ooh, woo! Boy, we waited six, seven years for this one. And I can't wait. Now, I want to start off by saying I'm not some kind of boxing fanatic and I don't follow boxing hard, hard like that, but I do watch it and I do follow it a little bit. And in boxing, see, boxing is different than other sports, like baseball. 
you might have a bad inning and give up like three or four runs and you could bounce back. Basketball, you know, you might go down 20 points on a quarter. You could bounce back. Football, you might go down 14 points, 17 points. You could bounce back and come back and tie the game or something. See, in boxing, though, one lick could end it all. One lick. And I said all that to say this. Pack out going to knock Floyd out Saturday night. I know y'all probably say I'm tripping, but that's how I feel. And I, I predict it's going to happen in the sixth or the seventh round. Floyd ain't going to be pretty boy no more. He going to get knocked out. And don't act like he can't get caught. Because he got caught. And I saw, I know it, I know it's real. But I done seen him get caught twice. Madonna caught him. And Sugar Shane caught him. And when Madonna caught him, his legs was buckling. Nah, hey. So it can happen. Watch out for this. I'm telling y'all, you heard it here first. This is going to be equivalent to when Mike Tyson got knocked out by Buster Douglas. I'm predicting it right now. Now, I will say this. I know Florida's the better fighter. I mean, that's understood. And Florida's the best defensive fighter ever. I mean, we know that. And if it get past the sixth or the seventh round, Pacquiao will lose because then that's when Florida starts weighing you down. You know, he gets better as the, as the, as the fight goes on. And then, you know, he just become a magician after that. But like I say, I'm predicting he going to knock him out. That Manny Pacquiao going to knock this boy out. And we going to witness history Saturday night. Give me y'all take on this, what y'all think about this. If y'all think I'm tripping, I don't care if you think I'm tripping. But that's how I feel. So we going to see. Y'all holler let me let me know what y'all think about this. Two days away from the NFL draft. I'm real anxious and excited to see who going to be a part of the Who That Nation. I'm hearing all kind of stuff, all kind of rumors, and they saying that Saints going to trade up in the draft to get to the second, third pick to get Leonard Williams from USC, the best defense alignment in the draft. I'm hearing they might trade both of their first round picks to get a big name player. I mean, nothing going to surprise me with Mickey Loomis and Sean Payton. You know they about rolling the dice. You know that. And whatever they do, I'm pretty sure it's going to be something that's going to make our team better. So I can't wait. I'm really excited. If they do decide to pick with that 13 pick, I'm pretty sure they're going to go after a pass rusher. Hopefully, Vic Beasley falls to that 13 pick. I doubt it. Uh, Bud Dupree will be the next pass rusher. I think that the Saints should probably take a pass rusher out of Kentucky. He's real, real big on their draft board. So, I think that's somebody they can end up taking at that 13 pick. That 31st pick, I think I'm hearing they're going to pick either a receiver or offensive lineman. Uh, Trey Jackson, left tackle in Florida State, who Vic Beasley abused on national TV. But they got it going first round. The Saints big on him. And Jalen Strong, 6'2 wide receiver from Arizona State who won the wide receiver of the year award this past year. That's some guys that I think that the Saints probably going to end up picking if they fall to them at them slots. But we'll see. I know Sean Ray, the pass rusher from Missouri, was high on the draft board too. But as y'all know, he got stopped today and cited on a marijuana possession charge. <laughs> Which, that's mind-boggling to me. You get stopped on a marijuana possession charge two days before the draft, son. Really? You serious? You couldn't step away from that weed two days before the draft? <laughs> I don't understand what these dudes thinking about. Bro, it ain't that serious. I'm sorry. I, I, I need to talk about this for a second, bro, because it's this getting out of hand. Every year, you seeing this happen to these guys, bro. Like, what you thinking about? You know the draft two days away. You just riding around, getting loaded. I, I guess you think you're invincible. And now you didn't cost yourself millions of dollars. You was projected to go 10, top 10 in the draft. Now you lucky you get picked in the second round. Step away from that weed, man. It ain't that serious. Like Stephen A. Smith say, stay away from the weed. Randy Gregory, he gets high at his mind but right before the combine. And fails a drug test at the combine. If that ain't stupidity, I don't know what is. Josh Gordon just got banned for a whole year without pay. Because he can't stay away from the weed. This should open up a lot of you young guys' eyes, bro. You big time athletes coming out of high school, even the ones in college right now. You failing all these drug tests. It's going to get back to these NFL teams that y'all failing these drug tests. Don't cost yourself millions of dollars like that. Let me tell you something. Money should always a blunt. Money should be undefeated. It's always about the money. Don't cost yourself millions of dollars like that. It, it's not that serious. 
You that's gonna affect not only you, but your family. If you got kids, man, y'all need to be trying to learn from these situations that these guys are going through right now. Don't be a statistic. Do not be a statistic. I'm telling you. Learn from this. Next year, you're gonna see it again. Hopefully we don't, but you're gonna see it again. Guys filling drug tests at the combine. Guys filling five and six drug tests during the season before they get to the draft. That's what, just what it is. It's an epidemic. Tyron Matthew, you know, he cost himself millions of dollars. Tyron Matthew should have went first round. But because he couldn't stay off the weed, he went like third or fourth round. And now he got to wait to after that contract. He played through this contract to get paid. I'm telling you, bro. Don't let that weed take over your life and mess up your money. I'm telling you, because that's what it's doing. Y'all young guys in high school, y'all need to learn from this. Be better.